using GPTs for podcasting. So when GPTs first came out, I'll be honest, I had my doubts. I am somebody with no coding background and I thought there's just no way this is gonna be something that I can use. But guess what? I was completely wrong and blown away by how accessible building GPTs was. In fact, I was so excited, I actually ended up doing an Instagram Live with me building a GPT at the airport because the very first GPT I built was on a Delta flight and it only took me about 20 minutes and it was something that I had wanted to use to demo for a workshop that I had the next day. Hi everyone, I'm Saba, the CEO of Designing Schools and on this channel, I help you learn the skills and the mindsets that are going to give you a human advantage in a world with AI. So hit subscribe for insights and strategies because I wanna make sure that you are someone who is irreplaceable in a world with artificial intelligence. Today, I want to demystify GPTs for you. We're going to talk about how you should think about them, where they fit into your work and your projects, and I'm going to guide you through creating your very first one. Now, you may have heard people refer to GPTs as AI agents, and to me, the word agent just feels a bit impersonal and honestly feels a bit weird. I prefer to think of them as teammates. Remember when we all first started using ChatGPT, how we used to call it like our thought partner, our collaborator, and that's really, to me, the beauty of these tools. They kind of start off as these like informal thought partners and assistants, but then over time evolve into something much more important to the work we do and how we do it. And if you actually think about it, that's how a lot of great collaborations really start. There's a casual interaction, let's do this shared project, maybe we work on this you know, thing together, and that one conversation leads to another, leads to another, and before you know it, you're working on larger projects, you're building deeper relationships, and sometimes even there's a new job opportunity. And that's really how I see the evolution of ChatGPT and GPTs. They went from being these amazing assistants where now we're at a point where we're like, oh my God, I need you all the time, and I'm gonna create like multiple team members and if you think of each team member as its own GPT, that to me has been the most useful analogy for thinking, okay, where can this really fit into my workflow? So this is really how I want you to begin thinking about GPTs. They are your assistants, they are going to be like multiple team members, but here's the catch, each of them can only do one specific task. And it's really all about being able to like clone your efficiency and sometimes even your creativity. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to build your own GPTs that can handle specific tasks, really taking them from being these assistants to being these very essential members of your team. Now, in order to do this, one of the first steps is really to be able to identify where a GPT can make a really big difference in your workflow. Oftentimes, the best way to start is by looking at your job or a specific project and asking yourself these questions. What tasks in my current workflow are repetitive or time consuming? Number two, are there any aspects of my job that I usually outsource or wish I could outsource? Uh, number three, which parts of my project do I enjoy the least or find the most challenging? Number four, which tasks if automated could significantly improve my efficiency, output quality, and number five, is there a task where having an assistant or a teammate would allow me to scale or expand my project to be more effective? And by answering these five questions, you really will begin to start to form a clearer picture of where a GPT can fit into your overall workflow. It's not just about replacing a task, remember, it's about doing better things and doing things better. And when we begin to think about things from that mindset, it really helps enhance our overall output, quality of work, but also the enjoyment and fulfillment we get from what we're doing. So let me share my example for how I first discovered the value of a GPT using those five questions. I really wanted to be able to create a daily podcast in addition to the weekly episodes I was already doing, where something where it would allow me to kind of share like a daily prompt, a little bit of motivation, things that people could try to just like strengthen their mindset, be more confident and comfortable with change, because that was a need that I had really seen in the workshops and things that I was doing. Now, when we break podcasting down though into steps, you have things like choosing a guest or a topic, conducting the interview, editing the episode, creating the show notes, publishing it, and we haven't even gotten to the marketing piece yet. So an area for me that is very time consuming in, and that I used to also outsource was the show notes. 
In fact, I actually used to pay somebody, it sounds crazy now, but I actually used to pay somebody $30 each episode for show notes, but not anymore thanks to GPTs. And I was actually inspired to create this GPT because the person who was doing my show notes was actually using AI and using it wrong. And the show notes actually came back incorrect. I was like, this is not what the episode was about. And when I told him, hey, look, I am all for AI. I love AI, but it has to be used in the right way. He actually apologized, but it actually really inspired me to just be like, okay, how can I figure this out myself? I cannot emphasize this point enough. It's not just about using AI. It's really about being able to use AI correctly. And this is why I also say AI can replace you and parts of your business and why that human element is so, so, so important. So if I was a podcast producer and I'm seeing how easy it is for people to do show notes and, you know, different parts of the episode, I would be going above and beyond to be giving people ideas to help them think of new ways to make their episodes and you know podcast even better and stronger. Now to build GPTs, you will need to have ChatGPT Plus. So you do need to have the subscription. When you do, on the left-hand side, you are going to see the Explore tab. Once you click on Explore, you're going to then see create a GPT. Now, these are the ones over here that I have created that I've been experimenting with, but we're gonna come over here and do create a GPT, and we're actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I built out my podcast show notes GPT. It is truly my favorite one. So over here, we're gonna say, I wanna make a GPT for podcast show notes. So you can begin to see already why I said I thought coding was gonna be such a big barrier. I opened it up and I was completely surprised. You can see over here, I'm literally just gonna be using natural language, just talking to it the way I would talk as if I was hiring somebody to do this for me. So we're not gonna get super picky about names over here, so we're just gonna go with the flow. Yes, this name totally works. Now, it's also important to remember that names, images, all these things can be updated later so I would really focus in on building the actual product, making sure it works really well and that it's doing what it is that you need it to do. So here we go. It's now generated an icon for me. Now, if I want here, I can say, you know, um, I'd like for it to be black and white with a pop of red. So if you really want to get into it, like I said, you can really get into the nitty gritty, have it generate whatever it is you want for you. That's the last little edit that I'm going to make here. And we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so here we go. It kind of added a very subtle pop of red in there, but we can be like, yes, this is great. So there we go. And now we're ready for the next step. So now basically what it's going to do is see, you can see over here, I'm not even having to do much at all. It is prompting me with all of the questions and all of the things that I need to be thinking about. So my podcasts are about technology, AI, and education and i usually have a guest on the show and yeah and let's just let's just go ahead and put it right there and in my next one what i basically really need to do that is probably one of the most important parts of this process is being super super specific about the type of instructions it is that you want it to follow as it is creating things because you will notice here it does kind of try to take control a little bit it's going to say, it's going to kind of guide me through the process. So it is important to read through these questions and just make sure if there's anything there that you want to kind of push back on, feel free to always, always, always push back on anything it says and anything it shares. Now, because I already know the different things I want, I want show notes that have a short overview, no more than three sentences. I want it to pull three key points, three quotes from the episode, and I also want there to be a section for my daily spark prompt template. If you guys have been following me, you know I have a daily podcast. Within five minutes, I show you how to use AI with a certain prompt that you can try that really builds up your mindset. So I'm also going to include links to all of my social media handles so that it has those available to it. So I'm going to come over here and put website 
and we're actually going to have to go and pull all of these and the way I usually do that is I just come over to my website here and I have all of my different social media handles here so we can come over here and let's go ahead and put in our website I'm going to come in and put LinkedIn and we'll just do those for right now. We'll go ahead, press enter, and now it is going to have saved this information. And you'll notice with each thing I'm adding in, it's saying updating GPT, updating GPT. And that's where it's basically remembering these instructions for us to later go and test what it does. All right, here we go. Now it's pretty much ready, it's fine tuned. And it's gonna give me now an overview of the different things that it is that I asked for. And basically this over here now is our playground to be able to test to see how it's working. Now, you may notice it has actually self-generated a description and these four initial starter prompts here. Now, if I come over here to configure, I can change the image, I can change the title, so I can just call this podcast notes if I want to. Um, I can say designing schools, podcast, show notes. And then over here, you can see these are all the instructions. We can keep updating these. Um, and if we don't want these, we can actually just delete them. We don't have to have these prompts there, especially if this is something that we're using. Now, this upload files over here is a really interesting one. Let's say I have 50 different show notes from 50 previous episodes. I can upload all of those examples in here for it to be able to learn from. Now you'll also notice I can turn on web browsing capabilities, I can turn on image generation capabilities and code interpreter capabilities as well. And one of the things that, you know, for the show notes, I don't probably need this as much, but if you are creating a GPT where you want somebody else to have that functionality within what it is that you're building, then this is such an incredible thing that we have access to where you can see literally just in a couple of minutes, we have this up and running. So let's go ahead and actually test this. So I actually have a transcript right over here. I am just going to go ahead and pull this for the test over here and I'm just going to basically come in here now and say actually you know what let's go ahead and publish this first so so what we're going to do now is go ahead and publish this GPT and you'll notice when I save there are three different options I can save this so this is something that only I have that someone with a link can use or if I want, I can actually make this public. Now, I will say I have found that GPTs have been most useful for me in my own task. I do have one that I've made public that I'm gonna share with you, which you can find in the description below. But let's go ahead and just do anyone with a link. We'll confirm this. And then let me actually go out and use this as if I was in my GPT. So one of the things that you'll start to see is on the left-hand side, we will see over here, all of the different GPTs it is that we're building. So that way, when we want to kind of like go to that team person, they're just there ready in the list. And so now I can just say create show notes and I can cut and paste in my transcript. Now, what's really amazing about this is if you'll remember before, I would have to have given it those di directions, create a short overview, no more than three sentences, three quotes, this, 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 this. And now I don't have to do any of that. I can just come in here and be like, create show notes. And now let's go ahead and see what it is that it creates. So it did an overview like that. It's, let's see, is it gonna do my quotes? And it's like the key points, here we go. So you can see these are all things that I normally had to tell it to do that I don't have to do anymore. This is truly, truly, truly such a huge time saver. And over here, now it's gonna go ahead and put in my daily spark and it's doing all the things it is that I asked it to do. Now, if there was something Let's give it a moment over here. Okay, so this is really interesting. I don't remember asking it to do these strategies. Um, one of my favorite things that I do like is that it has linked these here. And one of the things you wanna do anytime you do a link is you do wanna click the link just to make sure that it is working. Like, okay, good, it's working. Definitely, definitely, definitely check all the links just to make sure they're working. Now, let's say I'm like, um, I don't remember asking for strategies over here. We can come to the podcast notes and we can do edit GPT. Okay, so we can come here and we can update the instructions. We can be like, this is amazing. I just tested it. 
However, I don't need you to add strategies for reflection. Thanks, it was great. Okay, and now it's going to remember, it's going to be like, okay, we'll take that strategy part out and we'll kind of keep everything as is. So I just have to come over here, save, update it, and we're good to go. Now, the next step is to be really specific about what it is as part of that workflow that you want done. Exactly as if you were going to give instructions to a person that you had hired or that you were outsourcing the task to. Simply just saying something like create show notes is way too vague. Instead, you wanna say something more like, I want show notes that have a short overview, no more than three sentences, three key points, three quotes from the episode. And in my case, I would say something like, I also need a section for my daily spark prompt and I want all the shared links to my social media, my website, and to any other resources that I might want to share. And that to me is really where the time saving comes in because think about how repetitive it is to always be giving that prompt over and over because you might just be thinking, well, I could just do that with ChatGPT. But the problem is it's redundant to give those instructions over and over. It's like hiring somebody for the first time every time. But because now all of these instructions are all in here, I can just simply upload my transcript and say create show notes because it's already been trained on what I need it to do. Now, this not only saves time, but it also saves me quite a lot of money. And it's really giving me the confidence to start putting out daily episodes, something that honestly I thought would just be way too overwhelming for me to do. And these are the kinds of examples that when you are able to figure out how it works in your workflow to allow you to have a bigger impact, for allow you to create more content, for allow you to have more of a presence, will again, make you irreplaceable in the age of AI. Because sometimes it's not even about coming up with it for you, which of course you wanna be doing, but if you are working with clients, if you are working with other people, this is how you identify use cases for the value of AI to allow people to not just do things better, but to do better things. Now, I'm gonna put a link to the GPTs in the comments so that you are able to go in, play with them, take a look, and all of those good things. I'll also have a blog post with this one just to show you a little bit more of the details behind the prompting and things to consider. So now it's your turn. Go and find a use case and examples like these are really what are going to make you irreplaceable in a world with AI. Remember, it's not even just about always finding it for you and thinking about this, but when you do it for yourself and you have these examples, you are now in a position to be able to help other people identify these use cases and these examples as well. So comment and let us know below, how are you using GPTs? What have you found them useful for? And what ideas did this episode spark for you?